Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to paint your 3D prints to look metallic. This here is one of my first prints that I had done the metallic finish on for the first time. In this video, I'll be doing another one and showing you my methods on how to do it. If you want to use this exact print that I have, the A10 Warthog Bullet, it is available on my Patreon. Here are the supplies that you'll need. First up is a primer, I'm using gray. Next you want Rust-Oleum metallic finish, a silver one. And third, you're going to want another Rust-Oleum metallic finish, but copper. Last, I have some watered down acrylic black paint for finishing it off. Starting it off, I will be priming it. Make sure to get a nice and even coat along the entire print. Once you have the primer down, go ahead and pull out the next color, which I will be using a copper metallic finish. You can apply this wherever you need to on your print. I am doing the base of my A10 Warthog bullet because the casing is copper. I suggest using whatever color has the majority coverage on your print before you use the other one. For me, it is the bullet casing. We are now moving on to the next metallic finish, which is the silver or aluminum color. But you can see here, there is a sharp edge. I do not want to go over this edge and overpaint on my copper, so I will be using this piece of paper to help cover it. This will prevent me from going onto the copper, as you can see, by drawing a fine line. This may not work for your print, depending on what you're printing. You may need to use a masking tape, or may even need to separate your model in different parts. Now you can see here the bullet looks really nice and shiny, but in my opinion it's not good enough. This is where the black acrylic comes in, because you want to darken up the bullet so it's not so shiny and brand new looking. First, I like to hit it with an airbrush, but just the air of the airbrush, and then I start going with the black acrylic. I go very lightly, because if you go too hard with the acrylic, it will splatter. This is an example. If you go too hard, you can see it waters and splatters. If you go very soft, like this here, you can see it's very thin and consistent. You don't see any droplets forming. So this is what you want to do. If you do brush harder, you want to move your brush around a lot quicker. For this, unlike the spray paint, you do not really want to be consistent and even with the whole thing. You kind of want to go maybe darken the whole thing only a tiny bit and then go in a quick and uneven pattern to cause some areas to be darker than the others and more to be more metallic than the others. This will allow a random effect and more realistic looking. Next up I want to point out the tip of the bullet and other sharp edges will gather up more droplets and much quicker because they lack surface area so whenever you brush in that area a lot it doesn't allow it to dry enough so whenever you're airbrushing make sure to avoid pointy or sharp edges because the paint will not dry up as quickly and it can cause it to run and make the print look bad I notice that even down here on these edges, the droplets are forming, so I need to be more careful about airbrushing that area and give it time to dry.
Next up here, I'm grabbing a rough hand rag and giving the freshly painted black a few taps around it. This causes a kind of damage and realistic look to it, how you could see on some metals. It's splotchy. You do not want to drag because you can drag on the, the spray paint. You do not want that. It will make it look messy and bad. This here, you want kind of a randomness to it, but be consistent around the bullet tip. This is specifically only for silver. I have tried this with the copper color and it doesn't look as real. So with the metal colors like this, it looks a lot better. Whenever you are using the rag, however, or anything similar, you do want to use something that is rough or has texture to it. You can see how the random splotches around it give it a bit more detail and texture. You can see in the rag here that the rag is nothing special. It is more old because I use it with a lot of my prints. I wash it out a lot. So it gives it more of a rough texture to it. It is also clothy and not smooth or fine in texture. So this is more of something that you would want to use to get this effect. You can see right here I am blending in the little splotches I just added with the towel. You do not need to do this. I think it looks fine either way, but I prefer it better with it slightly blended in so it's not going out so much. This right here is a clear gloss Rust-Oleum overcoat. Uh, this is optional. I like it because it gives it a nice shine to it and it also blends in some of the acrylic that I just spray painted onto here. I finished up with adding the detail and as you can see I started adding the clear coat and it added a big giant splotch on the bullet tip. This is normal but I did not want this. Sometimes too much chemicals or something in the can builds up and usually you're going to want to have to do a, a first spray off of your print if you want to avoid this happening. So I'm just continuing with the spray and trying to even out the lightness around the area because of that first original splotch I'm going to have to try and fix later. Now here I'm going to try to blend in the part where I messed up with the clear coat with black acrylic, but unfortunately the acrylic dries a lot slower causing droplets to form in the clear coat. You really do not want to spray anything over the clear coat because it will not go out well at all unless maybe you could do it in really light and thin layers. You might be able to fix it this way. However, if you add anything into the clear coat, like this airbrush here, all the droplets will form up into little balls within the clear coat surface. The clear coat takes a few hours to fully dry up, but I would let it rest for maybe a day. Right here, I wanted to see if I could add more detail after the clear coat, but you can see here that I stopped immediately because it's just not a good idea. If you look at that, that's not just the clear coat, that's the paint underneath the clear coat that the clear coat is grabbing onto. So you do not want to do this. It will mess up your print. Do not add any more detail. Once you put on the clear coat, it is done for, and you just want to let it cure. And here is the final product all completely dried. You can see it's very nice and shiny. You can still see those mess ups I've had in the bullet tip, but I still believe it's fairly realistic. Right there are the layer lines from the printer. I used a wood based filament so it did not print as good as it should. However, it does give it a little bit of roughness and detail. You can see here this is where I tried clear coating and then airbrushing. You do not want to do that, so avoid that mistake I made. And I believe that is it for these little mistakes. Just make sure you do not do those. I really hope this tutorial is helpful for you and your 3D prints. If you want to use this A10 Warthog bullet model that I made, you can get it on my Patreon. It is only $3 monthly fee. Very cheap.
and the model is original to me. I made it myself. Thank you for watching the video, and go make something awesome.